So what would I do if I had to paint this scene from Landscape Painter of the Year 2022? Let's get started. Landscape Painter of the Year. You can find the channel on YouTube, Landscape Painter of the Year. This is from 2022, and this is the episode from Scotney Castle, Kent. And I did a review of the participants in the last video, and then I thought, okay, Miss High and Mighty, let's see what you would do if you were there. So there's a photograph that's a screen grab from what they were painting. And now I'm going to do my attempt of what I would have done if I had been there. First of all, it would have been a bigger format, but anyway, like I said, let me see if I could put my money where my mouth is. One of the things that I think was lacking from some of the participants was some basic like strategy for how to paint this particular scene. If you look at the photograph, you can see that the building itself is quite warm. It has um, some browns in it, some grays, but if you squint your eyes, it really lean, the whole form leans toward being quite warm and light. And then the rest of the full, everything else, especially that tree on the left, is quite dark and cool. And so I thought that's how I would paint it. I would look at these things as shapes and look at what was warm and jump and try to oppose that with what I saw as being cool. And that green is going to be cool and my slightly orangish, pinkish, yellowish, whatever you want to call it, building stones are going to be warm. And I thought that is how I would approach it from a, a design standpoint. So that's what I did. So first I had to sort of block everything in a little bit. So that's what happened. That, that's what's happening right now. Now, I never, I'm not matching the uh, photograph. What I, I'm not matching my colors to the photograph. But what I am doing is trying to mute things down somewhat because it was not a bright sunny day. So because it's not a bright sunny day, then my greens probably have a considerable amount of its complement, probably have quite a bit of red or orange in them. So everything is gonna be slightly grayed down. And that's because that was what the day was. At the same time, what I wanna do is not make this a study in gray. I want to push color as far as I'm able to push it and have all those forms uh, come together because one of the things that's happening here, like I said, is on the right are all these warm forms and on the left are all these cool forms. But if I make them too different, if I was to make uh, the, the dark side or the cool side, dark, you know, incredibly dark, like almost black, and then have the opposing side be almost white, it's not going to read as a whole. They're just going to look like lumpy shapes. So I have to be sensitive to that and consider what I kind of think of as bending color. And in order to bend color, what I'm going to do most of the time is add its complement. So now what I'm doing, I know it looks a little weird, but what I'm doing is I'm looking for the darkest dark shapes. I'm completely not engaged at all in knowing that what I'm painting. I'm far beyond that by now. I already mapped out my strategy and now I'm just looking at shapes and wherever I see shapes I'm going to look at the mass of shape and then see can I plug some color into those masses and if I can then I might have a chance at a fairly successful painting so that's what I'm trying to do here and so far it's working pretty well now I'm using a flat brush and the paper is Arsh cold press it's only a, uh, like a, oh, is it a seven by six, something like that. It's not a very big size, so there's not a lot of real estate to cover, which is fine. You know, this is the kind of thing that I like to do um, recreationally. It's just kind of fun because uh, the stakes are low. The stakes are so low, it doesn't matter if I pull it off or not. But I wanted to see if I could because I did critique the paintings yesterday. I, I don't think at all that I would have succeeded in the competition. Um, I'm going to say there's definitely, there just is, there's a watercolor bias that happens in this, in this particular program. And I accept that. Um, and I do think that the winner is, was a well-deserved winner, but I wanted to see what would happen if I was to approach it. And I am surprised that many of the contestants did not approach it in a similar way in terms of seeing darkness and coolness. 
and many of them ended up with very monochromatic solutions, which um, uh, if you watch my video from yesterday, you'll, you'll see that I, I didn't find particularly satisfying. But the winner I did find satisfying. That, that was pretty terrific. All right, now we're going to dry everything. And things are pretty locked in, but now I've got to really establish where my darkest darks are. And there are a few of them. If I do too much of this, like I said, it will be polarizing, and, and one form will be too warm, and one form will be too cool. So I have to be careful about this, and just really, really carefully squint my eyes and look for those defining shapes that are important for the form, but that don't take over the decisions that I've made up until now. So I think that worked out so far pretty, pretty well right now. Oh boy, it's so hard when you see yourself painting because, you know, um, now I can look back and think, eh, maybe I could have stopped right there, but I didn't. And so we're going to keep going just the way I did. And that's what happened to the painters on that day as well. I'm sure you get carried away by the wind and the, the uh, television cameras and who knows how many other distractions. All right, so there we are. That is my solution to this painting. And in a second, oh no, that's not my solution. That's right. I went back. This is where I was at, at what I thought was the solution to the painting. And then I had some time to think about it. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. You haven't gone far enough. Everything works in terms of its relationships, but it's too, um, I'm going to say dull. I needed to bring more brightness in. And so I printed out a guide for myself, which is the first time I think I've ever done that, and I don't think I followed it. <laughs> so I don't know why I placed it there. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm creating, I'm putting in some chronacronum gold and some other warmer tones just to see if I can um, strengthen the brightness issue. I just didn't have the brightness that I wanted. And in truth, when you go back to the beginning photograph that they're working from, there is no brightness. Everything is extremely dull. But I feel like it's my job as the artist to enhance color as much as I'm able to while still staying true to what's in front of me. And then the sky was completely gray. There was nothing there, but I felt like um, it needed some form up there. And that form kind of echoes the tree because otherwise that tree form, that big round tree form is just too big and round in contrast to almost the triangular form on the right. So that's just artist license, but I, I think that was a good decision to do that. And then what I also did was I put in, you can see there's also some warm, I threw a little bit of pink up there in the sky as well. Now what I call final adjustments. None of, probably nothing about this matters at all, but it satisfies me. I need to know that I've taken the value range as far as I possibly can, from my darkest darks to my lightest lights. And so that's what I'm doing here. There aren't many real, real dark darks, at least when it came to the decisions that I made, but I was pretty determined to, um, to follow it through to the very end. So that's what I'm doing here. And I think it looks, I think I'm able to make it look like there's some, some stones there. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, it's satisfying to me. And at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of what matters. And it was a really, um, it was definitely a, a, a difficult subject to tackle, especially with the light of that day. But I feel like I got something that was kind of feeling like that Stockney Castle is. And so that pleased me. So since I am reviewing these different episodes of Landscape Painter of the Year, I thought, come on, you got to be fair. Let's see what you would do if you had been there. And let's see how you measure up. So, like I said, this is my solution to that particular episode. Um, and remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And I will see you next time. And when I say mass for value, I mean find your clumps of values, darks, mediums, and lights, and plug color into those masses. And you can have, that's one way of painting, rather than looking at individual objects. And if you would consider it, please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.